Okay. Now, I think it's fair to say that generative AI is taking a world by storm. Many of us, if not most of us, are now using ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot. But there's features and function within these systems that really enable them to be even more helpful. So in this video, I'm going to look at a thing called custom GPTs that we can use within ChatGPT. So let's go to my ChatGPT screen. First of all, I think we'll all recognize this screen. Let me just open the sidebar. Now, GPTs allow me to formulate a conversation and structure that conversation in such a way that I can share with people. I can keep it myself in a library or I can publish it. And it's very, very simple. Now, there are very complex ways of using it, which we will go into today, but I'm going to look at two very simple ways of using custom GPTs, creating your own, and you'll be blown away about how easy they are. So if we go to this tag here, Explore GPTs, you can see this is brought a screen up. It looks a little bit like an app store uh, because we can actually go and see many GPTs that other people have written. But what we're really interested in this case is writing our own. So let's go to where it says my GPTs here. Let's go to create. And I'm going to, I'm going to look at two ways of creating a custom GPT. I'm going to look at where ChatGPT actually created for me, and I'm going to create one manually. So first of all, let's look at creating one with the help of GPT. And we can see we've got create and cover here. So let's go to create and it says, hi, I'll help you build a new GPT. So I can go and add anything into this prompt and there's thousands of different use cases to use this. But in this case, I'm going to look at investigating financial reports from major companies. Let's say I'm a shareholder and I want to really investigate, do a deep dive. So instead of you watching me type, I've already pre-typed this prompt. It's very simple. Let me just cut and paste this over here. So it says, I will attach Amazon's, Amazon's Q1 2025 financial report. Please create a chatbot that allows the users to explore and examine the results. Very, very simple. So let me just upload using this plus sign, upload from the computer, and here's Amazon's report that I've just downloaded from the internet. So it's already there. There's not much else to do. I can now preview it by asking it to uh, summarize. So let's go ahead and initiate that prompt. And first of all, it asked me for a title. If I like the title, then it's really going to propose Amazon earning analyst. That sounds pretty good. So let me say, sure, that will do for me. And now it's going to create a, an image and all our Custom chat GPTs can have an image we can create our own, or uh, chat GPT will create one for me. So it's creating one. We can see it's doing this little thinking here. Um, yeah, sure, why not? That's a good enough image. So we'll do, sure, we'll take that. And that's the two steps. The only two steps it asks if you want to title it creates an image. And now it's actually created the custom GPT. And I can go over here and say, please summarize. Profits, perhaps. And we can see it's gone through and, and looked at the report and it come with, comes up with a very nice overview of the profits. Let me create this. And now I can link this. We can see there's a little image. It's called Amazon Ends Analyst. It's by me. And I can send this to anybody with a link. GPT store, which we saw already. Oh, only me. So let me just only me for now. We'll save that custom GPT. And it's as simple as that. I've now created my own GPT. And this is what it looks like. And and, and, and there's four conversation starters that it's put in there for me. So let's just um, do one of those. Explain the income. And it will go and explain the income. Wow, well, it's 20% increase from a Q1. So 20% increase in in, uh, in a year is pr pretty good. Now, let me see, or let me show you what what this looks like behind the scenes, because we've actually done nothing here. So remember we created it here, we can change something here, but if I go to configure, now we'll see what ChatGPT has done. It suggested the name, it's created its own description, and it's created a prompt here. This is a fairly, 
lengthy prompt compared to what I was asking it, and it's created four conversation starters. Now, conversation starters are the boxes you've seen where instead of typing something up and I can change these or I can add one in, do what I want. Here's the file I loaded. And there's different capabilities. I can take away this web search for you. I probably don't need that. I don't need Canvas. And I probably don't need image generation. Down here, I can create new actions uh, or additional, additional settings. So this is where I could add APIs, do all kinds of stuff, make it very, very complex, but that's outside the scope of this. And here I can share it again. I've got updates pending, so let me do the updates here. And we can view the GPT again. I've not changed anything, so it'll look exactly the same. So that's a very simple use case where I've just loaded a document and now I can share this with my colleagues, with my friends. It could be any kind of document, it could be a story, it could be a book report, it could be anything. But you can see there's thousands of different ways of doing this. Now, on the other hand, I could do, create something very specific and use the configure to create something specific. So let's go back to explore GP, GPTs again. Go back up to create. And instead of doing the create that we did last time, we're going to go to configure and we're going to create a quiz uh, for an eight-year-old. So I'm not going to spend any time on the name. Well, let's just sort it quiz. Let's call it math quiz, math quiz. And we'll st stick with the same description. And then we could give it a, an image here. In fact, let's use Dali to create an image. Uh, with math quiz, we can be typing this in while it's doing that description. Math quiz, if you like. There's a little image it's created for me that looks really good. It looks like a calculator. Now this is where I'd put my prompt in. And I've spent some time creating this prompt and I create a lot of my prompts using Word because I find it a clearer way of doing this. But here's the prompt. It's fairly long. It's very simple. I'll put it in the comments. Um, but it basically starts off with, you are a quiz bot, a fun, supportive, encouraged math quiz host who helps eight year olds learn math while having a great time. Your turn should be playful, kind and clear. You speak in short, easy to understand sentences. Now, these are just standard prompt techniques. Um, and I go on to tell it the different kind of themes I would like and to make it easier, high or medium. So let me just, again, take that and we'll put here. And we could have some conversation starters. We can so we just put the list, put start quiz for this one here. We don't need to do a web search. We don't need Canvas. We don't need image generation and we say you don't need code interpretation. So that's where we are now. So let me just create that. I'll do only me again. I save any sort of publish here. Let me view the GPT now. We've got start quiz, math quiz by John Beaumont. And I can just do start quiz here. And then we're gonna get that prompt here. Woohoo, welcome to Sun Fun Math Quiz Adventure. I'm so excited you're here before we blast off into brainy fun. Now you can imagine I can send this link. Um, as we'll see, I need a paid subscription to create these, but anybody can use these on our free, the free uh, chat GPT. So I'll show you that at the end, but uh, um, you will only need the paid version to create these. And I could send this to my friends or family or or in my local eight-year-old uh, to do math, and I could use any this history, English, anything. This is a very simple use case again. Uh, let me do the easy one. Um, I don't want any math trickery here. And well, let's just do one question. And uh, was that six, six questions? Make three more. We, we think that could be 12. So you see the the, uh, the nuance here. It's very easy. This is what everybody else would see. And um, I can now edit this. Again, I could put something else in there. If I, if I don't like the way it looks, I've told it to use emoticons. Maybe I don't like that too much. And now I can share this using only me, anybody link on GPE store. So let's just stay with link. 
So as you can see, super simple. Many, many people use lots and lots of these. You can see I've got a few for a genealogy, and I use one on my homeowners association with lots of documents, very much like the Amazon one where we can go through the documents. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If you've got any questions about the custom GPT function, please drop it in the comments. Please give me two thumbs up. It means a lot to a small genealogy and Gen AI channel. And if you've got the time, please subscribe. That would be wonderful. Good luck with ChatGPT and good luck with exploring the GPTs. It's a really neat way of using ChatGPT. Let me know how it goes. Thank you for watching.